Hello, everyone. Welcome. And uh, I am really excited to be here today. Uh, Rob, are you excited to be here? Very excited. We have a lot to talk about, a lot of great training that we're going to start today. Absolutely. And we're here to talk to you about uh, developing Xamarin applications with Visual Studio. And specifically, we'll be using Visual Studio 2017 today. So let's get started. Now, I think the first thing we should probably do is introduce ourselves. Sounds like a good idea. So my name is Adrian Stevens, and I'm the Curriculum Manager for Xamarin University. And that means I get to work with the amazing people that create the training curriculum for Xamarin University. And that includes the live training materials that are used by the instructors, as well as the online content that you see on our self-guided learning portal. And I am Rob Gibbons, so I'm the Trainer Manager for Xamarin University. And my job is to uh, help our awesome training staff uh, get students up and going with Xamarin and uh, be really successful. Fantastic. And those are those guys are those are amazing trainers. The women Some and, of the best. and men, they're pretty fantastic. They definitely know that tech. Now, just in case any of you are not familiar with Xamarin University, we'd love to tell you a little bit about it. And uh, Rob, do you want to give an introduction here? Sure. Xamarin University is the premier program for learning cross-platform mobile development. Uh, we teach students how to become Xamarin developers. And we do that through a variety of different techniques. So the main one is our live classes with our certified expert trainers for teaching Xamarin. Students also get one-on-one -on -one time with instructors. So you can ask questions about your projects or any uh, misunderstandings or anything you don't understand. Our staff is there to help one-on-one. -on -one. We also have an amazing community of Xamarin University students that we get to participate with. And one of the best parts is you get the chance to become a certified Xamarin Mobile developer. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about Xamarin University, we'll tell you a little bit more about it later on. But uh, head on over to university.xamarin.com. Now, we'll be talking about development today. But keep in mind that uh, Microsoft has complete end-to-end -to -end tools to support you as a developer. And we're looking at mobile development today. And so that includes the development tools. Uh, but we've got a lot of other things to offer as well as you know, members of Xamarin and Microsoft. Uh, how about testing, Rob? Yeah, testing is one of the things I love best. And a little bit later today, I'll be running a training session on uh, testing your Xamarin apps, how to make sure that we ship the best possible apps uh, to our customers. Absolutely. And you know, keep in mind, of course, we have things for distribution. So we have uh, mechanisms. We have a really great product called Hockey App that allows you to uh, push beta versions of your applications to your testers. And then once your app is live and deployed to your end users, we've got monitoring tools as well just to track things like usage and even, even crash reports if, if that ever happens for our mobile applications. Now, we're ready to dive into the content, but uh, do keep in mind that we have experts on hand ready to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, anything you want to ask during the session today, please use the Q&A feature. Uh, we've got people ready to answer your questions. And Rob, let's talk about mobile architecture, and specifically using Xamarin and Visual Studio. So we all know this. We're, we're we're in a data-driven world. Data is everywhere. Everything is generating data, and we're consuming and watching that data really in all aspects of our lives. And you know, with that, Rob, you know, how, many, how many devices do you think you use on a daily basis? Well, as a developer, of course, I have lots of devices. I have probably six, seven, eight. But uh, and how about I, as an enthusiast? <laughs> as, as an enthusiast, yes, uh, multiple devices. And I switch back and forth between the devices all day, depending on where I am, what I'm doing, which device makes the most sense. Sometimes I'll be on my phone, sometimes I'll be on my tablet, sometimes I'll be on my laptop, sometimes I'll be on my desktop. It all depends on what I'm trying to accomplish at that time. Absolutely. So it was kind of the right tool for the right job. And yeah, I think, I think we're all in that boat now. We have multiple devices and we switch back and forth between them constantly. And you know, we think about that a lot with work, but it's really, it's again, it's all aspects of our lives. So it's things like entertainment and of course even activities as well. You know, wearables becoming a big, big thing, and you know, we're seeing the big emergence of IoT. Really, with devices everywhere connected to our data, allowing us to consume and interact with that data. And, and it's not just where we live, but it's really it's everywhere. Uh, and we expect to have that data wherever we go, whenever we travel, uh, anywhere we want to have that data. So how do you think people are consuming that data? Well, I know, again, as, as an enthusiast and as a user of mobile devices, I, I prefer apps. And I think most people probably do. Absolutely. And we see those trends. 
people are using applications on their devices. Uh, we see uh, it's highly favored over using you know, mobile web. And not only are people preferring apps, but that trend is increasing. So we see some, uh, some stats here from 2013, 2015. We're seeing application usage increasing over the mobile browser. And, and Rob, you can probably guess where that trend is going. I'd say it's going, going up. Absolutely. We're seeing that just only increase. So people are using apps. People have lots of devices. They're using apps, searching their data. And so for us as developers, if we want to present data, we want to interact with our users, I think we're going to have to make applications, but we're going to need applications that run on a lot of devices. We're making cross-platform applications. It's an amazing opportunity. When you look at the number of people who are using native applications, that's where we as developers need to meet those people, meet those customers, and provide solutions to what they're trying to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's think about how we've been typically making applications. So you know, we've got a lot of platforms out there. And of course, uh, we're focusing on, on kind of handheld mobile. And there's three big players there. And if you want to hit all of your users, and a lot of your users will have, they might have all of these devices, or two or three, or multiple of them. So we want to hit these major platforms, these major ecosystems. And well, what does that mean? Well, we've got to write some code, right? So we're writing our business layer, we're writing some UI. And then how are we making these apps? Well, we'll use the native tools. So uh, as Rob, I know you know this. Of course, for iOS, we'll be looking at things like Xcode. And the native languages are Swift and Objective-C. And of course, writing against those iOS APIs. And how about on Windows, Rob? What are we using? Well, of course, Visual Studio <laughs> would course, be our, of our, 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 <laughs> our favorite uh, editor. And C Sharp or one of the other languages in .NET would be great. Absolutely. And of course, if we look at Android, we're seeing something similar. We're talking about Java, Android Studio. And, uh, and they're all fine products. Uh, but of course, we see that it's different development strategies. It's different languages. So that means we're writing that three times. That's exactly it. And that, that sounds expensive. Well, it is. It's a code maintenance issue. Uh, you know, whether that means that we're writing the code three times, it takes us longer, or perhaps we have multiple development teams each specializing in each language. And we have a quick example here. We see some C Sharp, some Swift, and some Java. And this is a really simple construct, right? It's just, just a simple for loop. And although they look similar, they're all just a little bit different. And of course, Rob, I mean, we can't copy paste this code. And and for me, too, I'm not an expert in all these languages. I love C Sharp personally, uh, and I'm, I'm inexperienced at the languages. So that means there's a learning curve if I want to adopt this. And this is that maintenance issue of if I make a change in one place, I've got to make it in the others. And of course, things come out of sync, and, and it can be difficult. And like you said, this is just a, a simple for loop. Actual production applications, of course, are going to be much more complex than that, where you're probably not going to have a single development team that's able to write uh, production-ready application in all three languages. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I strongly agree. But it's a, I don't want to paint a bad picture, because of course, using those tools are fantastic, and you end up with a great experience. And what users are expecting is, are applications that fit within the platform they're running on. So what do we mean by that, Rob? Well, I, I would assume that means we want the native look and feel on each platform. Um, you know, I can always tell when an application doesn't quite fit in with the ecosystem and with the other apps. Uh, my brain's really highly tuned. Human brains are highly tuned to recognizing patterns. And we can tell when an application just doesn't fit in with all the other apps on our device. You know, we use these devices for hours and hours each day. So that'd be number one. It has to look and feel native. Uh, and then on top of that, it has to perform like a native application. So there's lots of different uh, application platforms that can produce code that's not the fastest, that can be interpreted and it's not exactly native. So I want something that's very fast. If it starts to lag or if it's a little bit slow, I'm going to notice. Absolutely. And uh, just a, a quick look here. We see you know, an example of an application, and it's running on several platforms, our three favorite mobile platforms here. And we see just the, the UI patterns are just a little bit different on each platform. And users expect to be using the correct navigation patterns, the correct UI styles on each of those platforms. So what we see, we want to make amazing native high performance applications. And we see that using the native tools means maintaining separate code bases. So this is where Xamarin comes in. And Xamarin is a cross-platform uh, mobile development strategy. And that's a tool set. And it allows us to write cross-platform applications in C Sharp using a shared code base. And, uh, and this, is, this is a big deal because, of course, this is going to help us get to market faster on those platforms. It's going to make code maintenance much, much easier, a shared single code base. Uh, and it means that 
we're more easily able to hit all of these platforms. Now, we've been talking a lot about you know, handhelds. That's kind of, we talk about mobile, we'll talk about cross-platform. That's kind of the easy story, but there's more to Xamarin, isn't there, Rob? Well, yeah, obviously, uh, by looking here, we can target just about any platform. And that means we can target the, the extremely popular ones, like you might think of iOS and Android. Uh, but we also get to target the billions of Windows desktops. We get to target the emerging technologies like HoloLens and IoT. We get to target game consoles like Xbox. We get to target wearables. There are so many different places where we can share the exact same code because we wrote it with C Sharp and we wrote it with Xamarin, and it's going to run on all of these different devices. Yeah, it almost seems, it almost seems a little bit like magic. It's pretty amazing. We can write a single code base that's actually able to run not even just across these different ecosystems, but across all these different device types as well. So what are we going to use for an a Xamarin application? Well, of course, we're going to use, well, let's use Visual Studio. And, uh, and which version do you prefer? Well, Visual Studio 2017 is yeah. what I use most of the time on Windows. We also have Visual Studio for Mac. So if you're a Mac developer, we can uh, target most of these exact same platforms. You can share your code, you can share your solutions, you can share your projects back and forth between uh, both of these incredible IDEs. And that is pretty exciting. It's pretty amazing to be able to use the platform that you prefer. You can go back and forth between Windows and Mac, and we've got Visual Studio solutions on both of those. And of course, we'll write our code in C Sharp. Uh, but it's not just C Sharp, though. Keep in mind that we also have access to the .NET library on these platforms. And this is really a big benefit of Xamarin. Uh, especially if you're a .NET developer, you've got access to all those amazing APIs, uh, really going to help you write performant, well-behaving applications. Now, one thing I want to mention before we get into some code is Xamarin is open source. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, this is big. This means that you have access to all the source code for all the Xamarin tools. So why might I want the source code? Well, uh, one, you get to see how we implemented something. Uh, I use that uh, quite a bit when I want to go see uh, why something's behaving like it is. We have access to that source code. And that's not just because I work for Microsoft. It's because it's open source and anybody can go look at it. Also, we love taking pull requests. So if, if anybody in the community uh, finds a way to improve the code, we would love to get the contribution back. Absolutely. Community driven, open, and, and exactly as Rob said, I, I can't reiterate this enough. It's really fantastic to be able to look under the hood See how the engineers of Xamarin have built the platform. It gives you a lot of insight of the type of patterns you might want to use when implementing your applications, when implementing new features on Xamarin. And, and even if we're not going to be uh, contributing code or looking at code, the other big benefit of Xamarin being open source is that it's completely free. And Absolutely. Very good point. This is also an amazing benefit. So Visual Studio Community Edition, completely free. Visual Studio for Mac, completely free. All the frameworks and APIs, completely free. Anybody can use Xamarin to make native cross-platform applications for free. Fantastic, fantastic. Can't get goosebumps, right? Oh, big fans. Uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Now, just talking about our shared code. So we're going to write our code. I think we've, we've got this across. We're going to share our code across all these platforms. But our apps are going to feel native. And why do they feel native? Because they actually are native. We're still creating native applications. That means your apps are going to be high performance. They're going to leverage the features that make each platform special, each platform unique. And they're going to use all those amazing native controls as well. So have a look here. We see our application. Yep. So we're talking about shared code. About how much code can we actually expect to share? Are we talking like 5% of our code? That's a fantastic question. Now, of course, I mean, as you know, it's, it's going to depend on your application, of course. But what we like to start with is sharing our business logic. And so all that core code, all, all, the, all the code that drives your application, we're going to share that. We're probably going to put that in some sort of shared location, and we're able to reference that, whether that's a, a shared library or even a shared project, in all of our applications and all of our, our different projects. Uh, and that can be, for a business application, could be 70, 80% of your code. Wow. And, uh, and we'll or show you another strategy a little bit later on that will actually get that number up a bit higher as well. So we're talking about things there like your data access, your, your web service access. Right, your, absolutely. Your validations, which makes up the core of most of the applications that we're writing, right? So there's this huge opportunity to share code, which means less bugs, it means less development time, it means less maintenance time. 
uh, the benefits just compound on each other, which you don't get those benefits if you're writing in the vendor languages like Java or Swift. Absolutely, and I know, Rob, you're very big on testing, and, and one thing we love with this is we can write a library with our business logic, write our UI tests against that shared library, lock that down. That means that, that library is out tested for all the platforms we're supporting. Uh, pretty fantastic. And just a quick example here, we see our, our lovely little for, we've got a for loop here again, a for each loop, and of course, we'll write this in C Sharp, that's going to run in all of our platforms. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about performance. We mentioned native tools, and we mentioned that we're making native applications. And I want to really, really read it. This means native performance. So we're writing in C Sharp, but we're using the native tools to compile our applications. So we're not running in a shell. We're not running in an emulated environment. We're running on iOS, or we're compiling an iOS application. And Rob, can we tell the difference with an app written in Xamarin versus an app written in, say, Swift or Objective C? No, when it compiles down, when Xamarin compiles your code, your C Sharp code down, that binary is now indistinguishable from a binary written in Swift or a binary written in Java. We are using the same tool chains. We're using the same binary format. We're using compiled applications. We get that native performance that we're looking for. It's fantastic, it's fantastic. And, and of course, the same is true for Android. Uh, we use the native tools, native performance, uh, and again, all the benefits of running a native application plus the benefits of cross-platform code sharing. Now, uh, this question comes up quite a bit, doesn't it? You know, very much. Are, are we limited with Xamarin? You know, we always worry, okay, we're not using something that's provided by each platform vendor. Is that going to make a difference in what I can do? Well, let's cut right to it. No, no limits. If you can do it with the native languages, you can do it with C Sharp. Again, we're making a native application. We have access to all those features. So that means we can use things like a Siri kit, and we can integrate with Siri and, and speech recognition in, in iOS, or we could use all the Google Play services on Android. And we can Absolutely. use uh, Google Fit, and we can use all the different frameworks and technologies that each vendor ships. Again, nothing is off limits. Absolutely. So 100% API coverage. Anything you do in the platform, you can do with Xamarin. It's, of course, true for iOS, definitely true for Android, and, of course, no surprises here, it's, it's also true for Windows. Of course, Windows uses C Sharp natively. Uh, and we've got all those APIs available. We're running our cross-platform applications. But again, I, I, keep in mind, you also have access those .NET APIs as well. And that's going to give you some advanced features. We've got our memory management, our garbage collection, and all the things we love about .NET. Things like in mobile, uh, using async and await in .NET is amazing. Absolutely. We want to make sure we don't block the, the user interface at all. And trying to do that in some of the other languages is a little bit harder. C Sharp has async and await, which makes it dead simple to do that kind of thing. And, Absolutely. And things like link and generics and all the, the great things, all the C Sharp 7 coming out, uh, we have access to. Fantastic. And, and that really, that, that's a perfect lead into our next point here. So we talk about API coverage, and we've got 100% coverage on, on our platforms. But we also get some benefits of using C Sharp, the language itself. And, and Rob, so what do you think of the code here? Well, when I first look at it, so we have some Android code there. And it looks a little bit verbose to me, as most Android does to me. But it looks like we have a getter and a setter. We're getting some text. We're setting some text. And then we have, it looks like a listener. And I know, I know Java enough to know that's how Java is going to wire up listeners or events. But as a C Sharp developer, that's not natural to me. Uh, I much prefer what we see there on the bottom. In C Sharp, we have just a property with a getter and setter. That's how C Sharp does it. That's the C Sharp syntax. And we also have an event handler. That's how we're going to handle events. So, one of the, the main benefits of Xamarin is not only do you get access to all of those APIs, but we don't just bring them over as is. We take the time and we do the work to make those C Sharp syntax. They, they feel at home to a C Sharp developer. And we translate them for you. And you get all the great IntelliSense and you get the great uh, IDE support really that you point. would expect in Visual Studio. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah, again, concise code. I love it. Using those patterns that we, we're used to, that we love as C Sharp developers. So what do you think about showing some code? Let's do it. Excellent. So I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. And we'll be running Visual Studio 2017 here today. And uh, I've got a, a cross-platform application. But of course, we want to show you how to get started with Xamarin. So Xamarin is included with Visual Studio. It's in the installer. So we can include it as an optional install in 2017. Uh, everything needs there. And when you have Xamarin installed in Visual Studio, we can make new projects. So if we go File, New, Project, we'll see uh, several options. 
And let's start under iOS here. So we see a number of templates. And we even see amazing things like Apple Watch right at the top here. And of course, we can target our mobile platforms, our iPad, our iPhone. And uh, often, we'll probably use the universal. And that just means we can use iPhone and iPad. Target uh, the most number of customers at once. Absolutely, right? And notice here, of course, we're not talking just about basic iOS applications. Take a look. We've got, we've got metal, new game applications here as well, scene kit, uh, even web view applications. So we're not limited to what we can do here. Again, if we can do it on the native tools, we can do it here. We're making native applications. Now, typically, though, for us, we'll probably make a, a, you know, a, an application using the, the native UI tools. Probably we can start with a single view application. And again, it's just like any other project in Visual Studio. New it up, give it a name, off you go. And then we also have templates for Android there too, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, should we show that now too? Let's do that as well. Sure. So let's, let's take a look at the templates. So our templates are, are designed to get you started with a, a great starting place and get you on your way to creating this app. So we, we provide lots of different templates, lots of different choices of how you want to start your application. Fantastic. And again, we see very similar things. I even see Android Wear in here. Again, web view on the Android side, our blank applications. And again, give it a name. Hit the OK button, new it up. Now, we've created a couple projects here already. And uh, let's take a, just a quick look at the iOS project. So in iOS, if you're an iOS developer, you're going to feel right at home. So again, we're writing in C Sharp, but all of those things that you're used to as an iOS developer are here. And we're leveraging the native tools. And that means that we used to have that app delegate entry point. Look at our app delegate. We're new up our UI window. Again, this is a native iOS uh, class. And with our window, we sign our screen. And again, we're following all those iOS development patterns. And the same is true on Android. So this is great because we get access, again, like we said, to all the APIs, all the classes, all the types that you get access to in Swift. So we have those different all right. uh, Nothing's native hidden, right? We're not, right? Nothing's tucked away. It's not abstracted. It's all there. It's all exposed, but with a C Sharp API surface. So, so we're actually learning iOS development and Android development as we're writing Xamarin. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. which is going to translate to uh, reading documentation or uh, learning other different languages as well. I think that's a really good point. Of course, again, we have the same API surface. So yeah, any of the native documentation, totally valid for Xamarin. And again, it's just using the different language. Uh, you don't think of it as, as removal from iOS. We're making iOS applications. We're just writing it in C Sharp. And again, let's have a look at Android here as well. Uh, very common, of course, we would, our, our main entry point, if you will, is often an activity. And we see that here. We're driving from that activity class and doing all the wiring there. And we'll take a, a close look at that in just a moment. But what I'm really excited to show you is a little bit of business logic sharing. So what we also have here is a shared project. And we we'll use this as an example of something we can use to share, well, our business layer, our business logic. Now, we've kept it fairly simple here. Just we want to get you up and running and get you writing some applications. So we made a static class. And uh, we have a simple list of strings here. So Rob, I think we should um, put some data in here, artist one, artist two, a little generic. Now, uh, I know you're, you're from Detroit, is that right? That is. Yeah, it's a big music city. Huge, one of the best. So um, why don't you tell me some of your favorite artists? Oh, well, Detroit artists, I, I could pick dozens and dozens. But I guess I'd have to start with Aretha Franklin. It's probably the, the biggest, uh, best artist we have. You can't argue with that. Uh, who else? You must have some other favorites here. Uh, how about from my hometown, Madonna? Madonna, right. You almost forget these people come from Detroit, don't you? <laughs> and then uh, one of my favorites, Eminem. Eminem, always Something a little choice. more recent. And that's probably pretty good. A couple more of Rob's favorites here. Let's fill that in, and off we go. Excellent. OK, so we've got some shared data. Now, what's important here is uh, we're able to access this from our platform-specific project. So in our iOS project here, of course, we've got a reference to that shared project. Let's just pull that up here. And uh, so we see here that we're referencing our shared project. And that's going to give us access to any data anything to put in that shared project. Again, simple example here, but of course, it could be far more complex. Now, just really quickly here, we've got a, effectively a data source, right? We have a list of strings. But what else might be here? Oh, we could do validation. Absolutely. We could call web services if we wanted to save this maybe to Azure. How about databases? Database. We could have a local database on our, on our device. Absolutely. Maybe cloud access tying into Azure. Yep, definitely. Excellent. Absolutely. And the same thing is true on the Android side here as well. And so with this, we're able to pull in this data. Should we have a quick look at some of the, uh, the UI quickly? Yeah. And again, we made this uh, incredibly simple for this demo. But 
uh, I think we get the point that we can share all that code between all the different platforms. And that code is going to grow and grow and grow. That's where the value of your application is going to live. It's what's going to set your application apart from other applications is that business logic. And it makes sense to share that across all the projects. Absolutely. So here on iOS, uh, we've got a UI table view controller. And this is just a piece of UI. It's a full screen piece of UI that's designed to show a list. Uh, it's really it's the iOS list view. Again, native, native types here. And uh, we see right here that we're getting, um, we've got a method here that gets the cells. So that's going to return the individual items in our list. And we're not going to dissect this too deeply, but you can see here that we're actually accessing our shared data. So over in our shared code, we have our artist data class. That's in the namespace of artists.shared. And then our type is just called artists. So over in iOS, we see here artists shared artist data artists. And then we're pulling out the string, the piece of information for that specific row. And again, then there's a little bit of work here to new up a cell and then display that piece of text. And notice in iOS, we actually only need one other method in this class to display our list. And with that, we run the application. We see we have our list here. And that's it. That's all we need to display a list of items in iOS. So we created a native iOS app in just a few minutes. It's a native iOS application, absolutely. Really, just we have to implement two methods in a class. Really wasn't a big deal. And just a touch of wiring in the app delegate to display our, our table view controller. Uh, over on Android, a very similar story. I'll jump to the main activity for now. And, and again, I won't dissect all of the code, but very similar. We've defined a list uh, in our UI. And again, we're reaching in and we're grabbing that shared data, the exact same data on Android. So we're pulling in on iOS. And again, we're just displaying that. And if we run that as on Android here, I think we have this up running here as well. And again, we see our list. Let's do the side by side. Again, the exact same data is being shown. But on we, both can, platforms. we can tell that the user interface is native. So we get the, Absolutely. the white background on iOS because that's the default for iOS. And we get the black background on Android and kind of the material design that Android expects. We have things like the little toast that pops up on Android. These are native. Right, this is native user, control. User interfaces, native controls. Excellent. But we're sharing the same data. We're sharing the same back end. Just that easy. That Just is easy. And if, if I came to this as a developer and I don't know how to write iOS code, where would be a great place to learn that? Oh, Xamarin University, uh, developers.xamarin.com, also an excellent place. There's a ton of documentation, a ton of samples. So at Xamarin University, we have free training. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, you can learn, you can get started completely for free learning all this stuff. So um, absolutely, yeah. if you've never seen iOS or Android code before, we'll walk you through it. Absolutely. And of course, we have all that free training get you started. And then we have the instructor-led training for the more advanced topics as well. Uh, lots and lots of great training resources. So let's jump back to the slides here just for a moment. So you'd asked about code sharing, about code sharing percentage. And again, we saw a very simple example there. And you might be thinking, well, that's just a little bit, a little bit of code in our business logic. Of course, we could expand that. We could mm -hmm. absolutely expand that. And typically, we do. But what if we want to share our UI definitions as well? Well, it turns out Xamarin has a solution for that. And so we're not only be sharing our business logic in this case, but we'll share that UI definition. We'll be able to lay out our pages, lay out our controls uh, using a single shared code base, and then have that run on iOS, Android, and Windows. And if you haven't heard of this, this product is called Xamarin Forms. And really, it enables more code sharing. Yeah, so we could go from 75% code sharing all the way up to 90, 95% code sharing, but still retaining those native applications. These are still completely native. We're not uh, again, we're not interpreting, we're not running things at runtime interpreting things. We are creating native applications, but we're doing it by sharing more and more code. Right. I think that's very important to get across. Is we're going to use a, a common UI definition, but we're still creating native applications. We're still creating native UI. So Xamarin Forms gives us quite a bit. And we've got a lot of basic building blocks for creating our UI. So again, things like pages. We've got lots of layouts. So we can do you know, grids, um, you know, a stack panel type. Uh, even even relative layouts, uh, and lots of other features. Though it's not just UI; it brings in other things like like data binding. Uh, there's some navigation. There's lots of ways uh, to in assist uh, reaching cross-platform um, you know platform-specific code. And uh, you know, Rob, what would you say is one of your favorite features here? Well, I like I like most of those features. Um, they all provide great value. I think my favorite thing is 
being able to define my user interface using XAML. XAML is uh, an XML-based markup language. It's used in all of Microsoft's desktop and mobile platforms now. And it was designed from the ground up to define user interfaces. It's what it's good at. And being able to use XAML and get that separation between my UI and my code and being able to actually preview what the application is going to look like in Visual Studio uh, is, is great. I love it. And combining that with data binding, it makes it an extremely fast development cycle to be able to create a page, create an application, wire it up to business logic, react to events when things happen, and uh, you know, get that app shipped out to your users as a quality app as fast as you, as you can. Absolutely. And, uh, and one thing I love about XAML is it gives us really strong separation of our UI definitions from, from our backing logic. And uh, actually, as, as Rob, you always tell me, you know, XAML is a language that's designed for defining UI. It's the perfect language. That's why we see it in a lot of Microsoft products, and it's really great. It's such an advantage to have that for both iOS app and, uh, and Android applications, and of course, for our cross-platform definitions. So, said so we have lots of basic building blocks with XAML and Forms. And uh, I don't, I'm not going to go through all of these. I don't need to go through them. Um, but to have a quick look here, we've got, we've got things like buttons, labels, sliders, really have all those basic UI pieces. Uh, and it gives us a lot of flexibility to build you know, business level and even more complex applications in Xamarin Forms. And if we want to go deeper than this too, we have some techniques as well. Uh, we don't have time to cover that today, but as you mentioned, Xamarin University, really great place to go and learn about more complex UI strategies as well with Xamarin Forms. So here's a quick example of some XAML. And, uh, and what do we see here? Well, first, I think it's important to note we have one XAML definition. That one screen is going to run natively on each one of the platforms. So we support iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Windows UWP, which includes the, the billions of Windows desktops. And soon we're going to have uh, uh, Mac applications, desktop applications with XAML form. Uh, we're planning on WPF applications as well. So we're going to be able to target just about any platform with Xamarin Forms that your okay. users are using. And that is really exciting. It's, it's, it's extensible, right? We've got okay. a, a, it's a development surface we can use. Now, we see the XAML here. This Rob's had exactly single UI definition. But this, will all, this will be used for, in our examples here, and of course other platforms as well, but we've got it on iOS, on Android, and Windows, probably UWP. Now, what's interesting here is we're defining an entry control. Now, that's, of course, a Xamarin Forms control. It's a Xamarin Forms element, and that's a UI definition. But the entry isn't really a thing on its own. It's just a definition. And what happens is, at runtime, that entry definition is used to create native controls. So on iOS, what do we get here? We get a, a UI text field, right? That's a native iOS uh, entry control. Uh, and there we get the edit text widget. And on Windows, on UWP, we get the text box. So again, common definition. Right, we have this slightly abstracted UI definition, but still creating native controls. And again, we still get native performance. Right. So, so we're not giving up that benefit that we saw with Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android. But now, as I mentioned before, I might not know how to create a, an iOS application or an Android application. Those are unfamiliar APIs. But as a Windows developer, as a .NET developer. As a XAML developer. As a XAML developer, this is familiar. Yeah. And I can write this once, and I still get that native performance, and I still get that native uh, iOS and Android and Windows application with the native look and feel, making my users happy, but making me happy as well. Absolutely. And I think we should show an example of this. And, and one of my favorites, actually, is creating a list in Xamarin Forms, because it's really it's, it's easier in Xamarin Forms than it is on any of the native platforms. And uh, I think we should do that right now. Let's do it. So we already had that project up, our, our artist data. And we've got our two head projects here. We've got an Android project and an iOS project. But what I want to do is actually add a Xamarin Forms project to this and actually consume the exact same data so that we have the option. We can do it per platform, or we can use the more, um, the more cross-platform UI strategy here. So, and Xamarin Forms is a great choice for applications like this that are going to have the same user interface for each platform. There's not a lot of derivation. There's not a lot of difference between the different platforms. And that's where Xamarin Forms really shines. We do have the ability to customize if we want to, but for an application like this, it makes perfect sense if we're just creating a, a music database or a, a music list to go ahead and just use Xamarin Forms. Absolutely. So let's show them how easy this is. So I'm going to right click. I just put a little solution folder in here just, just to separate our Xamarin Forms solution from the other ones, uh, for the other projects. And I'm going to add, and again, we're going to go back to our new project. 
uh, wizard here. Now, instead of going to iOS or Android, we're going to look under cross-platform. And we see a couple solutions here, a couple uh, choices, I should say. So let's do a cross-platform app. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and, and actually, quite interesting, notice here that we, the solution that allows us to create a, a Xamarin Forms solution or a native. And what that means is we create a Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android project, just like we did by hand mm -hmm. with shared business logic. And so let's give this a, a, a useful name here. So I'm going to call this artist. I'm going to just put XF on the end just to separate it from our other projects. And we have a couple choices here. We do a blank app. There's actually a master detail that just adds a bit of a master detail UI just to get that wiring up. And then if we look at the bottom here, again, here's our choice between Xamarin Forms or Native. And then how do we want to share that code? Do we want to use a library? Do we want to use a portable class library? Uh, or do we want to use a shared project? I think I'll do a PCL this time. Whatever, whichever one you choose. Let's do a PCL. They're both good choices. Excellent, yes. Now, why might we choose a PCL over a shared project? I think it mainly comes down to uh, personal choice, whichever one you prefer. Portable class library allows you to distribute it in a binary format. Shared project allows you to do things um, on a per-platform basis a little bit easier. So there are pros and cons to both of them. Um, it really depends. And you can use either one. You can use both of them in the same solution. Absolutely. Some things can be in a shared which, which project. Which we'll do right here. Some <laughs> can be in a portable class library. Absolutely. And again, the big thing I love about the PCLs is the testability, right? We can write you to right. test against those libraries. Whereas the shared project gets included, that those files get pulled in and compiled uh, with each project. Makes it a lot harder to do. And so Visual Studio is creating our projects now, and let's see what's come up. Let's just collapse these down and have a quick look. So notice we have four new projects. So we've got uh, Artist XF, and this is our this is portable. It's our portable class library, and that's where our shared UI definition will go. And it's where our shared business logic could go, but it doesn't have to. Um, but this world will define our UI. And then we've got uh, three platform-specific projects. So again, we've got an Android project, we've got an iOS project, and a UWP project. Now, for UWP, does that just mean phone or just tablet? No, UWP runs on any Windows 10 device, phone or desktop. How about HoloLens? Or HoloLens or Xbox. Amazing, amazing. So we can target Xamarin Forms at an Xbox app or a HoloLens app. So we could leverage all the benefits of a UWP application using Xamarin Forms. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's still, it still amazes me. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun to do. So we've got our project up. And let's jump right in and consume our, our shared data. We've already defined it. I'm not going to define it again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually reference that shared project from this portable class library. So we're back to reusing code that we've already written. Instead yeah. of written, writing it again for another platform, we get that code reuse, which is our goal. Absolutely. So let's hit uh, OK. Let's bring that in. And so now let's define our UI. So in Xamarin Forms, uh, our, our main entry point is the application class. And there's a property here called main page. And we give that a, a type of content page. And that's going to be defining the initial UI to display. Now, again, of course, this is a, it's a, an element. It's definition. And it gets translated into native UI on each platform. Um, and so you see here it's already wired up. So it's, it's loading up uh, the main page class. And that's defined for us. And this is pretty exciting. So notice here, I'm going to open this up. We've got a, a C Sharp file here. But we also have our XAML defined. So that's our, our definition. This is our UI definition. So it looks like we have a label, and we're sending some text. That's pretty understandable. It's pretty great, yeah. So this is our kind of our hello world, uh, our file new uh, experience here. And it, of course, it says welcome Xamarin Forms. It's, it's a hello world ready to go. But let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's create, create a list. And this is a lot of fun, because we can show you just how fast, how easy this is. So um, what's the, the, the list type in Xamarin Forms? Well, that would be a list view. Excellent. Now while I'm here, I'm going to give it a name as well. Let's, say, let's call it list uh, artists. How's that sound to you? Sounds good. Excellent. So we're defining a, an object called list view. But remember, when we run this, that is going to actually display as a UI table view in iOS and an Android. Well, list view. List view and a list box, uh, or actually a, a long list selector, I believe. I believe it's a long list selector, yes. Uh, for Windows. Yes. Excellent. Now, um, for list views and Xamarin Forms, we're going we're gonna to attach a, a data source here. And so we need to define the cell, the, really the, the visual representation for each data point. And so to do that, we're going to do, uh, let's see, it's so a list view. We're going to define our item template. And 
And notice we're getting IntelliSense here with our XAML as well. Which I use all the time when I'm writing XAML. Oh, the, 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 I, I love the IntelliSense. It's pretty fantastic. And again, it's, you're seeing how fast we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And now let's do a, uh, just a simple cell. We'll get this up and running. And really want to parallel what we showed on the, on the, the platform specific projects. And so we'll use a simple cell that's defined in Xamarin Forms to display a single piece of text. And that's the text cell. So we're using a simple one, but we don't have to use a simple cell. We absolutely can define our own cell. We can make things look fantastic and look like uh, one of the best designed apps on any platform as well. We have complete control of oh, how things look and run using Xamarin Forms. Yeah, even right within the Xamarin Forms framework, there's other cell types. We can display images, uh, multiple lines of text, uh, and of course, we have lots of options for customizing the cell as well, having full control over it. Absolutely. And so we're going to use data binding. We're going we're to bind to a data source here. And so with that, uh, we're going to assign the text property. And that's, of course, going to display our text. These are binding. And we're going to bind that simple list of string. So it's going to bind root. And all we need to do now is wire up our data. So this, is, this wasn't too hard. So now I'm going to jump into the code behind for our UI definition. We named our list. Notice, list artists. Mm -hmm. We have the IntelliSense. We're going to set our item source. And again, we're going to reach into that shared data. That's that data in our shared project. So where was that again? Let's have a look at that class name. So again, our namespace is artist shared, class is artist data, and then the data is artist here. So let's go back and wire that up. And again, our IntelliSense walks us all the way through it. So we just set our, our data source to a list. List of strings. The same code that we wrote before. Absolutely. And again, we're just binding to that list. Let's try it out. And you know what? Let's try it on, on let's do UWP first. Let's do it. And they haven't seen that yet, so let's set that as startup. And notice that we didn't do anything in the iOS, Android, or UWP projects. They're there because we still are compiling native applications, but we didn't have to interact with those APIs. We didn't have to uh, go learn all those APIs. We're able to simply use Xamarin Forms, define the user interface once, and run it on all of those different things. Absolutely. Let's hope our, our demo gods here are, are treating us well today. So we should get uh, a list of some of our favorite Detroit artists showing up here. Again, this is going to be running on UWP, targeting all those different platforms we were talking about earlier. All right, again, we're seeing this on desktop, but of course, this will run, this will run on HoloLens. Mm -hmm. Uh, this will run on IoT. This will run on, and again, right there we see it. We get the Funky Madonna, MN, and, and, and Mini Pops, Rob. Mini Pops, yes. yeah. Yes. Excellent. So we try this on some of the, uh, the other platforms as well? Yeah, definitely. And one of the things I like the best is as a Visual Studio developer, we have an iOS remoted simulator. So we can. Should I show them that now? Let's, let's, let's do show. that. Excellent. So I'm going to select the Artist XF. This is the Xamarin Forms platform specific project. And uh, change it to simulator there. Ah, uh, yes, thank you very much. And so this is project. If, if you actually looked in this, there's very little here. This is just leveraging everything that's defined in, in that Xamarin Forms PCL. So it has the UI definition, and then that UI definition is also referencing our shared project. So let's give this a go. So drop down that drop down of simulators there. Yes. So we have access to all the simulators that I have here installed on this Mac. Right, these are build hosts right here. So actually, let's talk about that. Yeah, so one of the questions that comes up a lot with Xamarin development is, do I need a Mac? And yes, we still need a Mac to do development. And, and why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One is a legal restriction. Uh, Apple requires that we build iOS applications using a Mac. But even better for us is, as we mentioned, we use the, the vendor tools. We use Xcode to do the build. And that gives us a lot of benefits of making sure that our app is completely native. Right. So, and of course, Xcode only runs on Mac hardware. So, exactly. Yeah. So that's what uh, enabled us to get this native look, feel, and performance is by using the native tools as well. But as a Z Visual Studio developer, I don't need to know that. I just need a Mac it's, on the network somewhere. It's all and, integrated. And we can just run it right from here from our desk. So what's really amazing here is this is actually going to be compiled on our Mac here, but we're going to visualize it here on our PC, aren't we? So the 7 Plus, is that the right one? Sure. Let's Perfect. do that. I think that's the one that's running right now. Perfect. And so we're going to show, you off, uh, show up another so really cool. great tool here. I'm going to bring this up. 
And uh, this, is, this thing is the previous one, right? That's the previous we, we've one. We've got some change data, so we'll see that in a moment. Uh, but this is the iOS Remoted Simulator for Visual Studio. And, and this is not running a simulator on Windows. What this is actually doing is visualizing and providing interaction with the simulator running on the Mac build host. All right, so it is, it is uh, deploying right now. Here we go. We see it come up. Perfect timing. And again, we see your data. And fantastic. You see the UI, it didn't look any different than, than the non-Xamarin forms and the, the native it, Xamarin iOS version. But it's a lot quicker to develop. One of the other things, as we're talking about the simulator that I love, is uh, Windows hardware nowadays usually has touch screens, which means we can touch the simulator with a finger, just like you would a normal fantastic. device. Fantastic. Can't do that on our Mac. Absolutely. And we, of course, run this on Android. We see the very same thing as well. Yep. And, uh, but I think maybe we'll, we'll wrap this up. Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. So uh, a quick demo. And, and of course, we did a fairly simple piece of UI here. And we did that because we want to show you how easy it is to get up and running. Uh, but of course, we've just scratched the surface. But what I really want to emphasize to you is that you can make really great looking applications with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Again, if you can do it in the native platforms, we can you do it in Xamarin. And we actually have access to all those amazing native APIs with Xamarin Forms as well. Uh, so if you dig under the hood a little bit, you can wire up uh, native controls in Xamarin Forms. And again, so you're not limited regardless of the choice you take. And you can make really great, really compelling applications. And again, keep in mind, we've showed, we showed mobile, we showed handheld, but there's a lot of other device apps out there. We've said it a few times now. Again, HoloLens, IoT, gaming. Uh, so again, cross-platform code sharing. Create that PCL referencing from all those projects. Consuming that business logic in Xamarin form, especially with UWP, gives us such a broad selection of devices. So I think that's a probably a great time to point them back to Xamarin University. Definitely. Uh, as we mentioned, Xamarin University, we have uh, our live classes with our expert instructors. So you can subscribe to Xamarin University and uh, interact with them and learn uh, 80 different classes we have available. From uh, those experts. From those experts. Yeah. You get one-on-one -on -one time with those experts where you can ask questions. But even besides that, our self-guided learning is completely free. And we have d dozens of, of classes for self-guided learning. Oh, yeah, with more coming. With more coming. And you can get started on iOS and Android. And, and Xamarin Forms. And Xamarin Forms. And start learning and start that journey to becoming the cross-platform mobile yeah. developer. Yeah, it's the perfect place to get started with Xamarin. Uh, get all those fundamentals, get you going. Again, completely, completely free. As, as we talked about earlier, mobile is uh, eating the world. Mobile is taking over. Everybody has a mobile device, even people who don't necessarily have a laptop or a, a computer. And uh, we, we need to meet them where they are. So Absolutely. mobile is the future. Absolutely. So thank you very much. And thank you, Rob. Thank you, Adrian. You're very welcome. So again, remember, you're welcome to ask questions. Use that QA feature. Okay, we've got experts on hand ready to answer your questions about anything Xamarin. And, uh, and thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, everyone.